Hello, hello everybody. Right, and it's Bass History Day today. Well, I'm going to make some videos on Bass History because I think it's a remarkable journey that uh, luthiers have made. To, uh, from the 1930s, basically, right up until today and maybe in the heyday of the 80s and the 90s that uh, the bass guitar became one of the most foremost instruments even soloing everything nobody thought you could do that and that started with people like Larry Graham and Stanley Clark Bootsy Collins guys like that followed up by Marcus Miller Mark King uh, and of course the one and only Victor Wooten however the guitar I have right now is central, I believe, to this story. Because in 1979, 1980, there was a young man who had come from the Isle of Wight. White, not white, white, in the UK, uh, left his home went to London, squatted with some of his friends from the university and stuff. Held on a minute. That's better, isn't it? And, uh, you know, did all that stuff. Uh, and this is a special type of person that goes out and tries to do this sort of thing against all odds, but just gives everything up and goes away squats for a while, gets a job, not as a milkman, which he did, but afterwards got a job in a music store. I think it was Macari's or something like that. I don't know. Going off the top of my head here. However, what happened was this uh, person, if you can find my mouse, it's floating all over the place. There we go. This person took a job in this uh, music store for a little while and this bass guitar came in, sat in the corner. I think it was like, at the time, maybe six, seven hundred quid, pounds, sterling. And uh, this young aspiring musician had already be went, went in and made tapes and stuff, sort of like a... Uh, That sort of stuff, and uh, all that stuff. You, if you're a, a fan of this said person, you'll know all of those lines. And what happened was this bass was sitting there, and in I, th I believe it was 1982 during the British Music Fair, uh, he. Uh, the person who made this bass got an offer from the guy who was working in the music store and for cash and it was substantially less than what uh, the guy who made the bass was <laughs> was uh, was asking for and uh, but the luthier said yeah go for it let me hear the guy oh he sounds great yeah sell him it it was sold and the person it was sold to was uh, Mark King of level 42 fame and of uh, Thunder Thumb fame. And this is the precise model that he bought. It's the JD Supernatural Classic Series 1 Mark King model. Didn't vary and this one, this one is now 20 years old. I had uh, John Diggins build this one for me in 1999 and glad he did sorry sorry about the clacking I'll mute the mic in a little minute and we'll do a demo so this was just enormous for uh, Mr. King. I can show you the actual page on 
uh, John Diggins' site, JD Custom Guitar site, and here it is. Here it is, right there. See, I, I'll read from here. Later that year, I saw the very same instrument being played on top of the pops in a new band called Level 42. The bass player being Mark King, and the song was Love Games. Continued interest in the basses, the Level 42 is probably like, hey, it was all systems go. So he uh, really, I mean, there's Barnacle, Gary Barnacle's brother there, and uh, you know, the rest was history. And John saying, anyway, having made the decision to go for smaller body size, Mark came to the conclusion it wasn't for him. You know, that was about 1984 85 when Mark started getting status status basis and he had a very fruitful collaboration with uh, Rob Green of status now we have the status king bass and all that beautiful stuff Rob Green's basses are unbelievable but this one this is definitively Mark and he'll try to rest away from that I believe but maybe not you know, I think he's very proud of his early work, and I would be too if I was him. <laughs> Freaking genius. I mean, what? A left-handed guy playing right-hand slap and chewing gum and smoking and singing and... Come on. That's just pure genius talent. You're born with it, that's it. So, good job switching from the drums to the bass, Mark. I'm glad you did. I think everyone is glad you did. Uh, so, I believe that's probably one of the definitive moments in the British scene, anyway. Uh, but just to give you a little uh, rundown of the JD. Let's see what I've got in the loop pedal here. Yeah, let's go for a. Uh, I think we've got. Almost there here. That's Duran Duran. That'll do. It's all mute. JD sound to me is like heaven. It's my ultimate sound, and I know it's not most bass players sound, you know, but you can go But I like the That's clacky as hell because I didn't mute it from the mic, but <laughs> it's just when you pick this instrument up, you just go to another level. You, you, it seems like you channel certain things. So, so in essence, Mark really paved the way for other bassists in the UK. Anyway to come forward. In the US it was progressing very steadily and was almost acceptable. In the UK not so much. 
Uh, you had other players though, like Nick Beggs of Kajagoogoo, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, who who would take up the mantle and start doing some weird shit on the bass. So it was really good. So let's just play the JD. Let's play a couple of minutes. Show you what all the fuss was about, okay? Love that bass. Ugh. 
Whoa. Awesome though. So that's the history part one. Uh, actually, part two, I'm going to do another history lesson, but I don't have the basin question, which is, uh, it's called Brown, but I will uh, tell you about it. It's awesome. So I'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye.